This speech was a pain in the ass because I don't work on foreign games uh, now. I do, unfortunately. I was gifted that power by uh, obviously Mr. Burke because obviously he's started his arcade at Pastimes. Obviously, uh, so yeah, hopefully my wonderful Google Translator has done it correctly because I cannot speak a lick of these languages other than a little bit of German. Uh, the only uh, thing I'm going to say here is this is my adventures in pinball repair. How many people in the room have any uh, foreign games? What game do you got back there? I'm gonna put, I like putting people on the spot. No, <laughs> I'd never heard of that one. Is that uh, Zachariah Crunchy? Yeah, Zachariah. Okay, cool. And you can fix the one that's on the floor that I'm having problems with tonight, right? I don't know. It was working before we left, but it's missing 12 volts. So I think it's probably something really simple. So, Nevertheless, how many has been to my seminars before? Pretty much everybody. I've been in the industry uh, 28 years. It's almost going on 30 if you think about it. But I just put this as a ballpark because I did work for Dr. Scott's for 28 years. In the last year and a half, I've actually pushed over to Rob Burke's place doing uh, pinball repair. Uh, I am a computer programmer by trade uh, in nine different languages. So if you have any questions on programming, I can help you there as well. I am also an audio engineer, and I've done a little bit of work that I was trying to work on for American Pinball, but they did not like the way my style was. But unfortunately, when you're gifted a project that you have no idea what to do with, you go with the flow and you make what you think is right, but apparently it was not close enough. All I know is they gave me a term that says bongos and dubstep. How the hell do you make that work? Leave it up to Dave, he gave that to me, and I said, well, I'll try. And trying to work with something from the 50s and 60s, it's not possible. I am also an official historian, or game historian, uh, gifted that by uh, Walter Day. Because as you know, most of you ha have a trading card. Who's got a trading card in the room? I know there's a couple of us. Uh, I was actually gifted that honor to uh, give the first four trading cards away at sea. That was fun. If you guys know the uh, the guy that did all the voice, voices for Duke Nukem, John St. John got his card. Uh, Wes Johnson did a lot of work with Skyrim and uh, for perhaps, I can't even say the name of the company he works for, and a couple others. I'm always looking for new people to give those away to as well now. I'm also a, a retro computer res uh, uh, re do restor retro computer restoration and a historian. So I do a little bit of work with uh, oldcomputers.com. So if there's stuff on there, I try to give a lot of uh, insight on some of these older beasts that a lot of people ignore. So it all ties into pinball and then uh, the programming side of me. I'm also an electronic engineer and I can do repairs, I hope, after 28 years. And of course, I did your wonderful DJing at the Bumper Blast and of course, I did get yelled at for playing it too fucking loud. I'm allowed to say that, Martin, right? Good. And of course, I do still run an old computer Baltimore. You guys know what those are, right? For those kids, that's when you put a modem on the phone and you die. No. What's the phone number? Uh, five, six, seven, three, oh, four, forty, sixty, or sixty-nine. I can always get that later. It's, it's, yeah, well, I can give that to you guys if you guys will put it, just for giggles, because it does have dial-up. These are some of the foreign manufacturers that I have been working on in the last year and a half. Uh, obviously, everybody knows Zachariah. I am not going to try to pronounce any of these things other than Inder uh, and Interflip and Jutel. That's, that's all I know. I, I think that's how you're saying it correctly. But... All of these games have given me a challenge, and uh, Tony there knows that I swear a lot at the arcade. Anybody else got any of these in their collection, other than Zachariah Man back there with the Captain Crunch? <laughs> See, I'll pick on you. When I'm working on these games, I run across a lot of obstacles, and I tried to summarize it as best as I could with what I know. And like I said, repairing foreign games is just a little trickier than your typical American games. 
these are some of the notes that I made. The big one is the language barrier. I've had to pick up three different languages just to read and understand the schematics. Obviously, we have German. Uh, I can understand Japanese just fine, uh, Italian, and then uh, Spanish. And then, of course, you say French. Uh, yeah, it's 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 trying to it's kind of crazy trying to understand that because if I try to translate something for you guys, I I just don't want it to say hey. Uh, I could say something, and you could say hey, uh, cut off your, my nuts and put them in a box, and that's not good. <laughs> um, the one I do have a, a hell of a time with too is schematics. I'm always trying to source out uh, as many as I can find. I am making a gigantic database of what I've been working on at the arcade. Uh, Zacharias, thank God, they're mostly on the internet. Um, I have suffered a little bit on Ender and the, I think the Spanish, which is Segasus or Segasa. Segasa. Thank you. See, you're supposed to help me here because I have no idea what I'm talking about other than I see the name, I recognize it, I know that one's going to be a pain in the butt. Obviously the big thing I also do here is the conversion from 220 or 240 to 110 and how to overcome that problem. Thank God we can restrap some transformers. I've actually come across maybe a dozen that I can't because the transformers are locked at a solid 240 or 220. Uh, when you do that, obviously, you want to use a step-down or step-up transformer, depending on which part of the world you're in. Is that one cutting out, Martin, a little bit? Yeah. Here we go. Got it. <laughs> That's how we fix things at the shop, too, sometimes. Um, yeah, this is a big deal, because I have to do this on every game. This is the fun one. Obviously, everybody's bought a game probably used here once or twice and uh, you better inspect the work and in my past seminars I always say check everybody's work or you know even look and see before even trying to plug the game in I've seen some messes that I don't understand what they were thinking overseas I've had to overcome those problems and it's not fun because it all leads to the magic smoke if it's not done right This is one I've also learned very carefully, is take a lot of pictures. Now that we have the ability of cell phones in our pocket, if you do that and make a lot of notes, you know, what things go, especially wiring diagrams. Um, yeah, if, if you don't have schematic pictures and notes. This is another battle I fight, uh, semiconductor equivalents. Obviously, they do a lot of different things overseas that we don't do here in the States, even though we all understand basic AC to DC you know, theory. Uh, I've actually had to use a lot of Google databases to actually convert, you know, what is, you know, what TIP 102 is to us is probably something obscure overseas. I've seen a lot of TIP 141s using a lot of Zacharias. I've had to overcome that by using like TIP 143s. I think that's the top end on the amperage, I believe. I'm not sure. But don't quote me on that, please, because I don't want somebody tossing something in their game that may not be correct. I always do recommend you know hitting Google up and doing a quick semiconductor cross comparison. Uh, I had to do this as well as for ICs as well because there is a totally different way they do logic over there. Uh, we do here, obviously, is, is, is a PIA and so forth, and it breaks it down into like the different latches. There are, of course, equivalent latches overseas that they use. And this is what I was talking about, where you can go forward and backwards on some semiconductors. These are some of the recommendations that I've done. I use a Variac in all means, yeah, including an isolated transformer. Uh, this is a big thing because when we're in the arcade and we're on one circuit and somebody else is working on something a little, you know, sensitive or nowadays games do updates on the internet. If you trip the breaker, what are you going to do? You're going to brick a game 
Fortunately, I don't like that because we've got to reprogram SD cards. It's not fun. But I normally tend to bring most machines up slowly. I, I'm sure if you guys watch a lot of YouTube videos on older televisions and so forth and older monitors, uh, if you bring it up rapidly, what's going to happen? Todd, what's going to happen? Yes. Yes, and you read the words right out of my mouth. That's why I keep here. But no, I've actually do this a lot, especially with older vintage video games as well. So this also applies for that as well. I do that on black and white monitors, just so you know, because they do have the hefty, big, fat capacitors in there, th like three capacitors in one bank. Uh, those have blown up on me. I've seen it. I've seen the magic smoke. This is a must nowadays. I get a lot of foreign games now that actually have batteries on. You have to definitely remove these things. And what obviously happens is they leak. And you just can't go to Marco and say, I need a CPU board for, you know, like an Ender game. Good luck, because you're not going to find it unless you start sourcing eBay, which I normally do. I put little key tags in there if I'm looking for certain manufacturers. And I'll get a hot ring on my phone. It'll say, hey, we got a new listing for anything with Ender in it. I like picking on Ender because I like that system a lot. And I, you'll see a couple pictures that I've actually taken of a game that is one of my favorites. This is also a big must because a lot of these things have come overseas and they bounce in the crates. And, of course, the, really? <laughs> Yeah, he's sleeping. He's in a seminar. <laughs> but no, bouncing around in crates and seminars. Yeah, see, you got me doing I'm done. I'm going home. No, bouncing around in the uh, crates uh, and obviously the salt water and so forth. We get a lot of Aussie. Uh, the, the connectors are really cruddy. Uh, I've had to replace the connectors because of this problem. It's not fun because I know I hear Rob is like, what did you get done today? I was like, a headache. And that does happen a lot where I'm at. This is one. Yes. <laughs> I pick on you all day today, Brady Frank. Uh, pulling any fuses out right away. That's the first thing. Mainly I work on is logic. If you got a schematic, find the one for the 5 volt logic. That's the first thing we're going to worry about. And then start adding all your elements in, like your lamps. That's the second thing I would work on. Displays, we normally don't have to worry about that too much because a lot of foreign games, other than some Zacharias, are actually uh, LEDs. Which is kind of cool because a lot, of the, a lot of these games, I have to say, pioneered some of these earlier LED uh, elements that we're seeing nowadays on the floor. Uh, I don't remember what was the first LED machine. Do we got any historians in here? Sharpshooter is a pretty good one. I know there was one earlier than that. Yep. Chug a lock. This is one I do a lot. I have a voltmeter that does monitor 5 volt rails because it can record and uh, trap your settings so you can watch it when the game powers up and see if it's spiking or if it's dips lower than normal. Uh, I've had to replace a lot of capacitors in games to obviously pump this up. Uh, it is a known problem obviously with the capacitor fatigue nowadays. And that, that, like I said, if you've got a voltmeter that can monitor, that's a bonus, especially when firing up some of these older games. And my favorite is recap, 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 recap. Zacharias have horrible capacitors. I don't know who's the guy that put the one underneath the heat sink. He should be shot. And they're 40 years old. They smell like smoke from the bars. And my favorite is reflow every damn thing on those games. <laughs> 
Yes. And you know what voltage it runs at? Six. It's actually 5.9 or 5.8. I agree. And then that stupid watchdog circuit they put in there, the magic what wire? Zachariah? What color is it? White. Somebody changed it. No, I'm just saying. No, there, there's, I've seen one of those. Oh, geez. There you go. You know, that might be a problem. I can't figure that one out. You might have stumped the chump. Well, yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. Fuse clips. That's true because I have a drill at my bench because I actually retool uh, them for the American style because obviously the Europeans are a little smaller. And, of course, pushing on them breaks right through. And, of course, I, I do the smoke test routine. This is a good one nowadays since we have technology. I like to say get an idea how the game is supposed to boot up. Every game has a signature uh, phase. Uh, Sega's obviously they boot up. Sometimes they'll launch balls in the play field. People are like, it's broken, it's broken. I was like, no, it normally does an initial ball check. I don't know why they put that in the software sometimes. Uh, I've done this with like Phantom of the Opera as well because it does click, click, click. If you don't hear three clicks when it boots up, you normally means you got to blow and fuse right away without thinking about it. But yeah, YouTube is a big deal. I mean, if you can find a game that somebody has one working, because you can have something. I know uh, when I worked on the spooky on the floor that's out here in the show, showroom floor, I never realized it had audio when it, I think when you started the game right away. And this one, obviously, I did lose my audio because it's got some, some issue, which if anybody can figure it out, the soundboard works, but it's got like a high-pitched uh, hissing noise, almost like noise, an old modem. So it's a weird one. In fact, me and uh, Mike uh, Gulu, that was in here yesterday on the seminar, we are stumped on this one. But it works. We don't get it. It's just picking up a lot of noise from the computer or something. I do power up games quickly and make a quick assessment of what, need, what needs to be repaired. So when I'm working on stuff at the arcade, I'll have my list, and I'll like, okay, this is not working, this is not working, this is not working. And I'll, nor like I said, normally narrow them down, logic, lamps, solenoids. Pretty much in the displays, I, like I said, I don't worry about that because that's part of the main logic. If something doesn't seem right, obviously the big word is to stop. This is a big thing that we have a problem with in our arcade because we're still trying to teach the Greenhorns how to uh, turn on lots of games at once. And with a lot of foreign games, I know they are very sensitive to the reset lines and so forth. And if they don't like how the power looks, it sits in a halt state. So this is where I know then recheck your power supply connections if something doesn't seem right. And then, of course, what I mentioned is slowly add your fuses back to the thing. See, I did put that note in there. Yes, everything. I don't know why they did it. Mm, I got a lifetime supply, buddy. <laughs> I'm probably sitting on 10,000 fuse holders. I think we're good. And of course, I do remove batteries, of course, and install battery holders or even, look, sometimes NVM rams and Frank's batteries. So we're going to, here we go. Here, we me add it real quick. <laughs> Tired, okay. No, I know. Yeah, there's there's only a couple. I know there's a couple you don't have yet, but we can work on this. Cool. Yeah, if you guys want battery holders, Frank's the man right here. Raise your hand, there, buddy. Bow. No. Yes, they do. In fact, there's a lot of games that we brought that we put them in there. Don't get me wrong, I do like NVM Rams, but I, I hate them too. And I hate them because of the reason that some games 
aren't compatible with them because of the speed of the RAM. It's too fast. Yep. And that's where I go back into here. It's like, you know, games and you know, not booting right. And, you know, the first thing I do is, you know, I, I have my EEPROM burner. I will go through and physically check if I got in here. Because, you know, a, a scout is prepared. You keep your EEPROM program with you at all times, especially when working on them. And, of course, when they don't work, then you get, obviously, the, you know, like, like RAM checkers and so forth. They are a godsend. Uh, Marco does sell stuff like this. They're, they're pretty, actually pretty easy to use. Uh, it, you put the RAM, a chip in it, it will actually identify it. This is also mainly for logic. Um, my EEPROM burner can check RAM chips as well, and they're always continually updating software for it to allow uh, newer stuff like some of the uh, uh, 58, 5101s and so forth. Uh, but RAM chips, I do fail, see it fail a lot on foreign games, unfortunately. Yeah, this is a big thing I've seen on Zacharias. Yep. After 40 lousy years. 40 lousy years and people that don't know how to work on games, we have to change things. And that's normally the first thing I, I tackle is it's when we can't think in the morning, we don't have our coffee, it's like our RAM, it's like <laughs> we've got to go with it. And when it boots, obviously, congratulations, you made it that far. And then you can start playing games. The big, oh, this is an Indian scammer, maybe. What do you think about that? And I do play with those guys. If I can stop them from scamming someone and take up their time and talk about their mothers, we're good because it's not screwing someone else. Um, but the other thing to do is I, when, when it does boots, uh, obviously, like, like Zacharias, I do modify them for free play for homes and so forth. That's a good time to change your EEPROM so they speak English. And of course, there's a, the idea is to set it for free play. Um, we do a thing called double stack switches. I'm sure some of you know about double stack switching. It's a good idea. Uh, I think Marco does sell you know, some typical uh, contact points where you can do double stacks. Uh, if you can't find them, let us know. We'll figure out where you can buy them. And I can demonstrate on the floor if somebody wants to see what they look like and how we set them up in our arcade. This is some of my crazy work that I've seen in the past, enders and stuff like that. And you can see, obviously, the first one, obviously, we have a broken diode, obviously, that someone ignored and didn't bother putting back in the board, thought it wasn't important. I don't know what game that's for. Um, If I remember right, the second picture here, this is someone else's work. Didn't figure out what was wrong with it until we turned it on. They put the capacitor in backwards on the board. Didn't find that out the hard way until we turned it on. And of course I mentioned reflow, 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 and then of course some other jackasses idea with this, let's dangle the cap off the board. No it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> More hell from my uh, wonderful job at the arcade. Uh, we see a lot of coils burn up, and obviously batteries do blow up too. And this is one I found inside a cabinet. And I love this last slide on the t on the side there. I hate doing this to coils, but whoever designed that coil design needs to be shot. He said, "Let's just put it." between the metal. It's a good idea so it doesn't move around. That's actually mainly for drop targets and I think that is uh, that's I think that's an Ender design. One of my favorites unfortunately. More hell. We see the uh, very famous uh, battery that everybody loves. We can see this is a, a jewel. One of my favorite board sets. Uh, they're tend to be a little easier to work on, I think. And of course, we do remove them and clean all the, the battery damage off the board. And of course, some uh, boards we do modifications, you know, for different uh, address jumping and so forth to make it work properly. Who ignores those signs overseas? Yes, I have. I've been nailed three times last week. Uh, I've seen the the 15k uh, god. I'm still alive here again. And you know, I'll give you a nice speech this year. But this is probably one of the stupidest designs I've ever seen. 
They put all these wonderful plugs in, in high voltage and barely standing off the board. They actually cut out the holes in the board for the, tr the, the, for the bridge rectifiers and used the thinnest wire I've seen. Trust me, I've gone through and corrected all those problems, you know, thicker gauge wire on the bridges. But, yeah, I don't like it. And, of course, those are obviously the uh, 240 transformers. This you cannot convert to uh, 110. More hell from my favorite game in the arcade. What's my favorite game, Tony? You don't know. It's American uh, 1492. I love the game. It's got very cool roll sets. It uh, falls a little bit of stuff from a lot of Gottlieb games. And, of course, who doesn't love Christopher Columbus? <coughs> this is what happens when somebody uh, turned it on and left it uh, sit locked on. I come in in the week, and somebody says, yeah, your game caught fire. I was like, seriously? I started looking at it in the, uh, in the light, and I was like, well, obviously, that capacitor, the big one there, the big blue one, he's missing a little skin there. Got a little excited. I've never seen one implode. And, of course, the picture below that is the uh, on the left before. And, of course, thank God we had another machine with a transformer and after. So, obviously, you should be able to see the uh, company logo on the transformer. <coughs> and, of course, you see I do take pictures of everything where it goes. This is a must. else do we got here this is probably one of my favorite designs in I think some manufacturers should pick up this habit here they actually if, if, if you work on a lot of foreign games obviously the the uh, the lift system for the play field is horrible they tend to be a little sloppy and of course working on games you see I put a Williams coil in there I did cross-reference it to the right uh, specs don't quote me on that, but I like how they designed this bracketry where if you didn't have uh, a third hand, you could actually push the uh, coil stop in and locks in place. So you can reach down and grab your screw. It doesn't fall out of place. I got two pictures of the different angles. And, of course, the last shot, obviously, is uh, when solenoids don't work on the play field and you've pulled all that gray hairs out of your head. Then you realize you forgot to put a fuse in. I got one more slide here for you, and if you guys have any questions, I will definitely do it. Uh, this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite head scratcher, and I'm going to go to a blank slide because Office 365 hates me. Me and uh, good old uh, Todd here were talking about this one. This is the Scopatone. Anybody know the manufacturer or country? If I remember, that is Italy. Yeah. Enjoy a little bit of my fun. This thing wasn't working, and uh, it's kind of cool to see it actually function again. Do you? A pretty cool system. Five minutes. right yeah and uh, obviously the big thing with that one that I learned is and, and Todd knows and if you guys are any audiophile uh, heads especially like reel to reels and cassette tapes when you don't use them they sit in a box for too long you gotta obviously loosen and untension them you know rewind fast forward and so forth and back forth and loosen up and clean them yep um, what game eras do I hate ooh it's a tough one isn't it I hate Zacharias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like the system. They're great games, but I hate them. I, since I've worked on so many Zacharias, they all, like I said, they all have the same problems. And it, to me, it gets boring. Wait, 
What's your one you hate, Todd? Atari. I love Atari. I love him. If you guys need anything Atari fixed, I got you covered. Todd won't touch it. He can touch my Zacharias. I'll do the Ataris. Obviously, I did make a lot of mentions. Uh, what is the uh, uh, a certain manufacturer that I find easier? I thought it was Inder because they actually have a, a very clean logic path of how they design, including their schematics. Even if you can't understand them, you know, like I said, I pick up my phone and I'll actually use the Google Translator. This is how I actually learned how to understand, you know, like Italian and so forth, because I can use it and hover it over to the schematic and it would translate it in real time. That's good to know if you guys are on the route and have no idea what it says. You know, like I said, it could say, you know, like I think uh, coils is uh, uh, boyos, I think. I think I'm saying that right, but I don't know. All I know is I see it and I can translate it in my head just fine. My thoughts on LED and import games? Mm, there's a 70% chance. Some foreign games actually use 12 volts on their lamps. This I found different on a couple games. Um, Circus, uh, I think, was one that did it. There was another one. There was another jewel game that did use 12 volts. And it's funny, as we were like, oh, let's, told the guys, I was like, go ahead and LED that game for me. And they started popping LEDs in, and they turned it on. For a second. So they just blew away maybe $40 worth of LEDs. But if somebody was smart and opened up the back box, that's 12 volts only. Yeah, it's it's a thing that uh, you got to pay attention to. Jewel, and I don't have one on the floor, unfortunately. Come to pastimes, I'll show you a couple. Rob will fly you out. I'll pick you up from the airport. Projects that I would like to do on my spare time. Obviously, I love designing circuit boards as well. Part of my electronics background. Nobody really makes aftermarket boards for some of the games except for Zachariah. And, um, there's uh, Bell as well. They did some aftermarket boards for I would like to actually redesign some of those from original schematics, which I've gotten really good at doing. I've redesigned a few boards that we've uh, got in the queue to put in a few games of the arcade. All right, that about wraps up my uh, slideshow. Do you guys have any questions before I pass it on to the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Brian, who should be rolling in here shortly? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That means I'm losing my voice, and it's all good. Yeah. In uh, in the last year and a half, that that I've worked that I put my hands on, right? How many have I violated in about a year and a half? Let's see. Is that a good tone for it? Okay, about 150, easily, because I know Rob's got a lot of foreign games. And when it came to crunch time to get the uh, arcade, and speaking of the man, the myth, the legend, shh, don't look, don't look. Um, in the crunch time, like I said, with the arcade, we were trying to establish, if you guys have been there, you see, there we do have a dedicated row of nothing but the import games. And I call it my babies, because... Every time I go in there, I like to see them running. And when I see one down, I kind of cry and go back to my office and weep for a little bit and then look at the notes, and it's like, ball stuck. And I was like, bullshit. Nobody spent the time to unjam a ball. And then I cry because it was such an easy job. I was like, I got my work done for the day. Let's uh, relax. But no, um, I've uh, probably pissed through about 150 games. A lot of it is, you know, like I said, because they're overseas and a lot of them were neglected, probably in warehouses, battery damage. And, and I don't, we didn't have a lot of, not enough time to uh, start scoping down all the problems on them. 
you know, even to fix some battery damage. So I, I picked probably the best, I think we got a 15, yeah, about 50 in that row, easily, that uh, I, I consider my kids, and they're just amazing to look at. And then, uh, of course, the next goal is we're going to work on more upstairs because we got a ton of them. A whole section is dedicated for me upstairs. I didn't take a picture this year for it. I'll bring that for next year with some uh, good uh, soldiers that are actually working. Right. Yes. Yep. Right. Nope, I do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, a lot of the horror stories that I've seen, because obviously if anybody's seen his warehouse, especially when we had our pandemic, do you remember when Dave Fix creeped his head out of the middle of all those video games and pinballs? That's the nightmare I have to work with. And uh, the conditioning of the actual warehouse is fair, I would say, temperature-wise. But the import games were obviously in a different wing, if I remember right, Tony. And uh, they've they seen a little bit of hardship. But, you know, with, with the time I've been spending with them, I've made a lot of good-looking uh, uh, games on the floor that people are actually enjoying. And, you know, it's it's so unique to play some of those foreign games because understanding what were they thinking when they designed it and, it's just, and then playing it. Um, I do like converting them back over, especially, I hate to say it, Zacharias, I do convert them to English. Nobody wants a uh, far fellow talking to you in a very seducive, sexy Italian voice. But <laughs> especially at the arcade alone. Because I do, I do live in the arcade three weeks uh, or three days a week. Because I'm not driving back and forth to Toledo two hours. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's, it's kind of creepy too because we do have a few in there, especially uh, Terrific Lake. If you've ever seen a video on that, I swear to God, there's a woman that screams every 15 minutes for a track mode. Sounds like somebody's getting violated in the back corner. I was like, no, that's normal. She's she's a screamer. Hello. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one because there's there's a few games that are kind of terrible when they uh, they actually talk to you. And was there another one that did that? I'm trying to remember which there was a game that did an attract mode that was horrible that was freaky, but I can't remember the name of it. No, that with the bell phone to. Yep. It's brilliant. It's a beautiful touch. Anybody else got a question? That's, that's a good question because I don't import games. I leave that to the big guys. Uh, Rob, I'm sure he gets them a lot from overseas. He's got so many connections. Um, he, will, he will talk your ear off about foreign stuff if you want to really know. Uh, if you actually see Rob Burke do the show, just you know, ask him and say, hey, or do you, you import a lot of games from overseas? And where do you get them actually mainly? And like I said, I don't, I, you have no idea, Tony. It's just wherever he finds them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're pretty much they are. In fact, I think there's like one more batch of games that we're probably going to get. And of course, I, I I enjoy working on them. It's it's a love of the passion, you know. If you, if you don't like what you're doing, you don't need to be working. Yep. I'm saving history here, so I appreciate it. Okay, yeah. A lot of that's handled by the transformer itself. Um, most of the power supplies obviously will, obviously with 110 to, or 240 to 110, the uh, step up normally handles that frequency difference. Um, I've only seen maybe like one or two cases where it may screw with the soundboard just a little bit because the DSP on the, the chips for speech generation can be a little fast, especially when you do, uh, what is it, like we do with Commodores and stuff. The uh, 60 hertz obviously is faster. A lot of games you've written overseas for 50 hertz, if I'm correct, Eric. Come on, we're, we're Commodore nuts. Who's had a Commodore in here? So you know. What's that? Motors. Motors are a task. That's. I, I still think, yeah, because I, I, I have not seen any real issues with that. I've seen issues with lighting because a lot of the ballasts, some are geared for just solely 240 and 220. Uh, I do have a couple games that say uh, screw you when you put a 110 bulb in there. And, <laughs> and trying to find a 240 bulb here in the States, and thank God we got this thing called, what's the magic word? It begins with an A? Amazon. Amazon. If we didn't have it, or eBay, I think a lot of us would be screwed for life. Any other questions before I let the uh, man, the myth, the legend back there uh, take the stage here? Sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's good. But good for people who are selling them, not for us that are buying them. We like the $50 games, don't we? Yes. So, 150 games in the last year and a half. Yes. Small and they were all sold in the place. What are some of the most interesting, what are some of the coolest solutions or mechanisms that you've seen in these games? Because that's the thing that I think is always cool about it. Yeah. You, you, Ooh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, I think it comes down to when you when we look at the schematics for like the different manufacturers. You know, like like when we work on Williams, we know exactly how it's supposed to work, and they actually jump through another f different types of hoops with the logic. Now, some of the cool innovations that I've seen, that you know, for toys and stuff. I think the coolest one we got on the floor out there, I think, is time ma time machine where the play field, you have to go back in time. It'll start saying, prepared to go back in time. And if it's working, we'll get it working before the end of the show. But it'll raise that play field up on you. And we couldn't figure out, why is this thing stuck? And of course, overseas, it was all gummed up from somebody saying, yeah, let's just spray it with WD-40 and all that crap. And realizing, oh, we got a mess here. And trust me, I, I had the garbage can next to my thing. and. I think Tony's like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, I'm cleaning someone's fuck up. <laughs> I appreciate you guys today. If you guys have any questions, I'll be throughout the show there. I do like to keep a nice uh, PG-13 since we don't have any kids in here. I, I do appreciate the little harsh language a little bit. But when working on the foreign games, it is a headache. And I enjoy uh, headaches. You guys have a great day.